the Hawaiian Defense Headquarters. The roar of the planes you now hear is not a practice maneuver. It's not a maneuver. We're being attacked. It's an air raid. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor on December the 7th, 1941, here dramatically shot by Japanese film crews for propaganda purposes, not only crippled America's Pacific fleet, it changed the course of history. Just the day before the raid, President Roosevelt had personally appealed to Emperor Hirohito not to drag their two countries into war. But it was too late. Japan had formed a secret pact with Germany to attack the Allied forces in Europe and in the Far East. America at that stage was neutral, but generally sympathetic to the Allied cause. This was an attempt to destroy American military power in the Pacific before she could strike back. After this massive attack, Europe's war became America's, as Senator Connolly, chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, made abundantly plain. objective of Japan treachery. Scores of planes were bruised and battered by the Jap aerial bombs. Many of these were demolished beyond repair. Direct hits were scored on hangars and these were badly shattered. Equipment and airplane supplies were reduced to smoldering ruin. Here at the Naval Air Station is grim and positive evidence of Jap treachery. Here foul blows were struck while Jap diplomats were talking peace in Washington. America lost three destroyers. Here are seen the United States destroyers downed and shore as they rest from the bottom of Pearl Harbor with decks awash as the Jap bombers make direct hits on their decks. First to feel the sting of Japanese steel are the USS Oklahoma and Utah, the latter a 33-year-old target ship. Accurate hits by the enemy bombers make short work of these two naval bulwarks. Now with their keels practically out of water, they lie helpless wrecks and a sad reminder of cowardly strategy. To make possible a surprise attack within Pearl Harbor, the Japs built two-man submarines to enable them to fire sneak blows within waters that are narrow and tortuous. Several of these surprise weapons were blown from the water by direct hits of our naval gunners. Others were beached and captured. While sky and sea fire were still raging, salvage crews inspected our naval craft to estimate what may be saved. Before the din of bursting bombs had been silenced, preparations were underway to salvage these two warships. At low tide, the huge propeller of the Oklahoma, stilled by the enemy, was high above water. It is believed that the small two-man Jap submarines carrying dual torpedo tubes were responsible for these two losses to our Pacific fleet. Record for all posterity. 
A single lucky hit was responsible for the disaster that befell the Arizona when a jack bomb falling directly through one of the basket funnels exploded in the engine room and set ablaze tons of fuel oil. Dense black smoke billowed to the sky as the massive control tower began to keel over. The Arizona's courageous crew stuck to its guns until the very end. Here was displayed heroism that will live forever in the glorious annals and traditions of the American nation. With unbelievable treachery and craftiness, Japan has attacked our territory and murdered American citizens. Japan began this war in treachery. We shall end it in 